In this tutorial, we'll cover how to resend individual HTTP requests using BERT Repeater, and we'll look at various related workflows and options that you can use to support your testing. So BERT Suite Repeater is the tool that you can use to resend individual requests, modify them, and issue them over and over. The easiest way to use Burp Repeater is to send requests to it from other tools in Burp. So in Burp Suite, you can send requests between Burp tools anywhere that you see them. So I'm gonna launch Burp's embedded browser and visit a website. The request is intercepted in Burp Proxy, so we can use the context menu and select send to repeater from here, or if we prefer, we can go to the HTTP history. We can click on any requests that we're interested in. Again, use the context menu, select send to repeater, or we can go to the target tab and select an item that we're interested in and do send to repeater from the context menu again, or from any individual request panel, we can do the same. So if we send a request to repeater, there it appears. And on the left-hand side, in the request panel, we can see the request and we can also edit it. We can click send to issue the request. And then on the right-hand side in the response panel, we can see the response that came back from the server. If we want, we can send the request over and over. We can edit it and send it again, change it again. We can try different things, get different status codes back, different responses. Next to the send and cancel button, we have these back and forwards buttons where we can walk through the history of requests that we've made and see each request and response. And on each button, there's a little drop down where we can jump straight to an item in our history if we want to send that request again. But Repeater can also handle redirects. So if we find a request that caused a redirection response and send that to repeater, here we can see the server replied with 301 status code, which is a redirection. Uh, and we now have this follow redirection button. If we click that, but we'll update the request on the left to be the redirected request. And it will show the response from that on the right. If we want, we can do this automatically. So if we go to the repeater menu, we have these options for follow redirections. If we turn those on, we hit send this time, but automatically follow the redirect and we see the final response on the right. And down at the bottom in the status bar, that tells us that it followed one redirection. There are some other handy options on the repeater menu. So by default, but Repeater will update the content length as you edit requests. If you prefer, you can turn that off. By default, but will unpack gzip and deflate content in responses. If you prefer, you can turn that off. You can tell Bert whether to process cookies in redirects. You can change the view of Repeater. So you can have top bottom split or other views if you prefer. You can use hotkeys to send items to Burp Repeater. So if we select an item and type Control R or Command R on Mac, that request comes into Repeater. We can also use Control Space or Command Space to issue the request. You can configure Burp's hotkeys by going to User Options, MISC, and editing the configured hotkeys here. If you send multiple requests to Repeater, each one will create a different tab in Repeater where you can work. So each tab has its own request and response panels. It has its own history. So you can work independently on different requests. This is really handy in your testing workflow. If you are testing different endpoints of the application, different features, and you want to play with one request for a bit, switch and work on something else, you can then keep your work and easily switch back. If you want, you could rename tabs by clicking on the tab header and typing in a different name for the tab. This lets you easily label your tabs so you can come back to them and remember where you left off. 
You could reorder tabs by dragging them in the tab header. If you're finished with the tab, you can close it by clicking on the little X. And there's one more way to start off with Burt Repeater, and that is you can click on these little three dots to create a new tab. And here we're going to say type HTTP because we're working on HTTP requests. If we were working on WebSockets, we would select that option and it would create a different UI for working on WebSockets messages. We'll cover WebSockets testing in a different tutorial. So if we click on HTTP, we get a new empty tab with no request or response, no target details specified. So we could configure all of these manually, but there's another nice little feature in Burp. If you have a URL that you're interested in, if you copy that to the clipboard, you can then select paste URL as request, but it will then create a request and configure the target details from that URL, and you can then send it. So that's how to resend individual HTTP requests with Burt Repeater and various related workflows and options.